Are you aware of the spiritual dangers around you? Or are you ignorant? If you're ignorant, you will fall into sin. If you are aware, you will be victorious and be a spiritual icon in this generation. My name is Anes Wamboe and you're watching Satan Church Online. We are doing a series titled Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices. This series is from the book by Thomas Brooks with the same title, Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices, where Thomas Brooks outlines the stratagems that the devil, the supernatural intelligence of the Christian faith, has against believers. And he makes it very clear from the scriptures that we are not ignorant of Satan's schemes. And it is paramount that a believer who wants to live a spiritually victorious life is aware of the strategies of Satan and knows the remedies that God has given us in order to vanquish him. Last week we looked at the first stratagem of the, of the, of the enemy and that strategy was this. Hide the hook and show the bait, where the enemy shows us the pleasures of sin but does not show us the consequences. And we saw how he tried to use that against Jesus. This week, we're going to look at strategy number two. This is the second device by Satan to lure believers into sin. And this is what it is, painting sin with virtuous colors. Painting sin with virtuous colors. The second way the enemy overcomes the believer is by making the believer think that sin is not so bad. How does he do that? By making sin sound delectable, sound righteous, sound good. For example, instead of calling covetousness covetousness, he will call it being ambitious. And so you see someone's vehicle, you loathe this person because they have it, you desire to have what they have, you see someone's wife, someone's husband, and you desire that spouse for yourself. And the Bible convicts us, do not covet another man's property or another man's spouse or another man's wife or another man's whatever someone else has, do not covet it. But the enemy will make you, will tell you, it's not really coveting, you're just being ambitious, you are thinking about the future, you're longing for these things. And the moment you give sin that virtuous name, it has power over you. Another example, it may be lust. You lust after somebody and the enemy will tell you it's not really lust. You are simply appreciating this person's beauty. And because of that, you'll indulge your eyes in that gaze and you'll end up sinning in your heart. For example, drunkenness. He'll say it's not really drunkenness. It's just being merry, being sociable. And all the times we call sin by virtue's names, or, by the, or all the times we change the names of sin, from what they are called in scripture and give them other righteous names they overcome us the enemy has power to overcome us are you calling sin by a different name are you calling fornication premarital sex when the bible calls it fornication now this is the thing the way the scriptures call sin is not politically correct it is offensive to our world but you must understand that that is exactly how the lord sees it the moment you try and paint sin with virtuous colors, this is what happens. You deny the truth of the Lord, but secondly, you give this sin power over you. So how do you get out? This is the remedy. The book In the book, Thomas Brooks outlines a number of remedies to overcome this particular uh, device of Satan. And he says, and I'm going to read them aloud to you. Number one, <clears throat> call sin as it is by realizing that sin's composition does not change. That is remedy number one. Sin's composition does not change. That sin is sin. Giving it a nice name will not change its effect. It will still have power over you. Imagine <clears throat> if I baked you a cake and I put in all the ingredients, the, the flour, the sugar, the, the milk, the eggs. I mixed it all up. And then I took about 50 grams of poop, human waste, and I plopped it into that container and I mixed it up really well and I baked that cake and I offered it to you. Would you take it? Well, the answer is no. There's no way you would take it. Why? Because it is human poop. You must understand that sin is like that human poop. That you may try and give it fantastic names and it may look like a nice cake, but it still has got poop in it. And if it has got poop in it, it will destroy you. Secondly, Thomas Brooks says that the more unrecognizable sin is, the more power it has over you that the more you paint it with other names, virtuous colors, 
it changes its form its outward form but deep inside it is still as insidious and as dangerous as it has always been and because you've been fooled by the outward look it will have power over you it will slither past your defenses and you will not stop it because it has the form of godliness but it lacks the power thereof the more sin is unrecognizable the more power sin has over you thirdly thomas brooks says all truth will be brought to light on judgment day and i want you to imagine you've called the sin that you're struggling with or the sin you're indulging with by another name and because of that satan has fooled you and you're now in bed with it you're now okay with it but realize this that on judgment day god will not shift his definition his definition will remain and oh what trouble it would be for you and i to fall on the wrong side of god by disagreeing with him by saying lord it's not so bad and yet he says no it is so bad on the day of judgment all truth will be brought to the front i pray that you may realize this and stop giving sin others names other virtuous names and finally thomas brooks says the final remedy to overcome this device of satan is to understand that the best of sins the best sounding sins cost jesus his blood instead of saying theft we say embezzling of funds jesus says it is theft and it cost him his blood no matter how good it sounds remember the savior died and if jesus died for it it is a serious matter no matter how well sounding sin is will it change the fact that Jesus died for that particular sin that it cost the son of god his blood when you remember that it will sober you up and you will call sin as it is and when you call it as it is you will have an upper hand against it and an upper hand against our enemy the devil who comes to steal kill and destroy i pray this video has blessed you i pray it's been of benefit to you Please let us know your comments. Let us know what you think. If it's been of relatable to a particular situation you've gone through or are going through, share the video, like it, let your friends and family know all about it. I hope to see you next time. My name is Anes Wamboye and you're watching watching Sitam Church online.